Thanks for logging on to Black Video News. It is election time, May 24th on Tuesday, state representative in District 120. I had to have this sit down conversation with Barbara Gervin Hawkins. How you doing, Barbara? I'm doing fantastic. Barbara, thanks for taking the time out as always. You know, I've been following this election. Yes. We've had several different conversations and dialogue about State Rep 120. Let's go right into it. Let's talk about why this is important to you. Barbara, I know, I'm from the D too. Okay. <laughs> I know your background. Yes. I know that you are very successful. I know that you have a master's degree. We know about the Gervins uh, School here in the Alamo City. Why are you doing this? Keith, well, I, I, I got to know. Well, for me, it's more than just a campaign or an election. It's truly a calling. Across the country, African Americans, I believe, aren't portrayed in the best light. I think I can help that. And I can help that by being a leader that changes a conversation whereby we can not be victims, but be progressive in our thinking and in things that we're doing. So when I look at this office, I see it as a platform to use, okay. to uplift our conversation, change the dialogue, and to build stronger relationships. Okay, so when we talk about you're not pleased with African Americans in the community, I know I've heard you say it several times that this is like the land of milk and honey. When we talk about the Alamo City, a lot of opportunity, a lot of big companies are moving here. There's always growth. I tell people all the time that uh, Forbes magazine had an article talking about how this is a hidden gem yes. for African American entrepreneurs. Let's go right into it. What are some of the changes that you see need to take place with, with, your, with this subject matter? The, the first th thing we have to do is build capacity. The opportunities are here, but many of us are not ready to take advantage of those opportunities. And when I, what I mean when I say that is that we've got to learn how to get contracts and keep contracts. Okay. We've got to have relationships that open the critical doors for us. We've got to have the business community believe in us. We've got to get working uh, job or jobs that are, are good paying jobs. We've got to be able to open doors that I think is so vital, not just to the small business, but also to the individuals who need living wage jobs. So for me, Keith, and, and when I say African American, I'm not only just talking about black people in general. Okay. I think people that are in poverty, people who have not been able to partake in the success of the city, we need to be working together to get to a place that we can take advantage of these things. Okay. So, yes, I do agree with you. There's a lot of things that need to take place when yes. we talk about change. Uh, let's talk about District 120, yes. the community. Yeah. You've been out talking to a lot of different people. I know you've been making your rounds today. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about what are the people saying? What are they looking for for their next state representative wow. in 120? That's a great question, Keith. The people are hungry, okay? And the people want something new and different and fresh. We recognize that our previous leaders have worked very hard to do what they have done. But today in 2016 and moving forward, we need leadership that can connect and combine all the assets of District 120. We've got some great assets in this district. The Alamo Dome, AT&T, St. Phillips College, and large tracts of land. I can go on and on and on. So what the people are saying is help us. Help us move in a direction. We want to be better and we will do better. And I want to open those doors and be able to connect those assets so that folks can take advantage of them. Okay, so so when we talk about even the revitalization, let's use the east side yeah, it's okay. and how revitalization needs to take place on the east side. Mm -hmm. Is that an, on the agenda too when we talk about that? Because you know we're on the east side yeah. as well. It's major. The east side truly can have much more going on. We look at Fort Sam. That in itself, one of the most largest military installations in the country. We need to be able to use that, get those folks to mingle back into the community, rebuild our housing stock, and also spend money in our community. I think right. that's important. The other thing on the east side, the east side got a lot large tracts of land. Okay. People want to do development on the east side, but they've had a very difficult chance in doing such. And I think the people who, who put themselves up front as the advocates and who have blocked some of that development really didn't know what they were doing. 
And so I'm forgiving of them. And I'm stepping out here, Keith, saying that I want to work with folks from all sides of town to be able to bring their resources, make their investments, and help us build the east side to that area we could be real proud of. Okay, let's talk about our youth too. Let's touch on that. Being an educator, you know that we're, we're kind of missing the boat with our youth nowadays. Yeah. Uh, these after school programs, they don't exist like when I was growing up yeah. in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, what's important to you when we talk about the youth and some of the things, that sh the impact that you want to make with the youth when we talk about after school care and programs? Well, when I think of youth, it's not just after school care. Right now, families are at their weakest. We have to be real with that. Okay. So there's lack of uh, male role models in some neighborhoods. Also, the, there's, that, there's not that love or respect for learning that we so desperately need. I want to bring that back. And so we've got to have more services, services that young people can walk to. Because a lot of times, people don't have gas money to go to different things. Also, in today's time, even to play amateur sports, it costs too much money. And families who's making minimum wage can't get their kids engaged. Right. So I want to make District 120 an amateur sports mecca. We have the talent. But if our kids can't play because their families don't have the resources, that preclude them from being engaged. So I see D120 taking the lead in becoming a sports mecca for this city. I also see the after school programmings, not just on the ABCs and the one, two, threes, but also the performing arts. We've got some talented young people, Keith. I'm talking singing, dancing, uh, play acting, you know, uh, just many, many things that our kids can do. Artwork, the whole nine yards. So I want to expand those after school programs. And guess who can do it? Our faith-based community. There are many of our faith-based community want to do some things in District 120, but don't have the resources and or the facilities. I want to do a faith-based initiative. I think okay. that's vitally important. If the African-American community is going to get stronger, it's going to take our faith-based community. Okay. Also, for our viewers too also, they may not even know the, the job description yeah. of a state representative. I know that a state represents introduced votes on different laws in the community. You guys modify laws. Tell us a little bit about more what a state representative does in the district. Let me start by saying, Keith, politics is the game changer. And so when you're involved in politics, you can make some things happen. So when we think of the, the state of Texas, that legislative position, we're now talking about where education is impacted, the funding as well as the compliance and performance accountability. We're also talking about uh, law enforcement, where what happens, people don't even know today the juvenile records are not automatically expunged. I want to make that happen, particularly for low offenders. A lot of our kids are behind the eighth ball before they even get started because their lives are turned upside down for immature mistakes that they've made in the past. I want to fix that. Workforce development comes through uh, the state of Texas. Right. I want to work on workforce development that is uh, helpful to our young people who may not can afford to wait 90 days before they see a case manager or before they can even get a referral to a job and they need some immediate support. So I'm looking at education, I'm looking at restorative justice model, I'm looking at workforce development, health care for our seniors. So there's many issues that need to be addressed that I want to be a part of, of changing the conversation around. Okay. Uh, yeah, to health care for seniors, I know that you've been making your rounds and talking to a lot of the seniors in the community. What are the seniors saying, Barbara? Let's, let's just touch on them because, you know, my mother is kind of up in age too as well. You know, I think me and your mom are kind of like the same age yeah. in their mid-80s. Yeah, mid -80s. So let, let's talk about the seniors. What's important when we talk about our senior citizens? Well, first of all, the quality of our life of our seniors is most important. That's why when I built four senior citizen housing complexes, they were quality. Even though they're low income, I went out and got additional resources because I believe we need to take care of our seniors. Right. Their biggest concern is the cost of their medicines. Their concern is, is it safe in the community? Right. So if, you, if I was to say whether the two main priorities is safety and health care. Okay. That's what seniors are interested in. That's, that's good stuff. Um, that's important too also, like I said, you know, my mom is up in age, so we're always concerned about our senior citizens. Let's go ahead and shift gears away from State Rep, District okay. 120. Let's talk about family. 
All right. Let's talk about family. I know that uh, two of your sons both have master's degrees. Yes. Education is key. You've kind of illustrated that with your sons raising them, and both of them are very two educated young men. Let's talk about family. My family is number one in my life. My mother, who's been the rock, uh, I was widowed at a very young age, at 39, and she helped, has helped me. My family circled around me, my sister, my brothers. A lot of people don't know I have four brothers. They always think about just George, but I have four brothers. So my family has been a, a big supporter of mine. But my two wonderful sons I've been blessed with, uh, you know, people ask, how were you succe so successful with your, your sons? I kept them busy. You know, they did the soccer, the uh, baseball, the football, the band, basketball. Both got scholarships to go to college. And so I feel so immensely blessed. Wow. Now, they will take over the youth center. Okay. And they will run the youth center. Now, uh, it was interesting, and that's why I know this race is a calling for me. One has his master's in education, the other has his MBA in business. So, you know, uh, it's hard to fill my shoes, Keith, but I've got two sons, and they can each have one, <laughs> one shoe to fill, <laughs> and, and I know that they're capable. Okay. Yes. Well, let's go ahead. Let's, let's go ahead and have that conversation. Stay logged on. We'll be right back. Stay logged on. Thanks for logging back on right here to BBN. Yes, I'm here with Barbara Gervin Hawkins. She took the time out to talk to us. But also, I've got Nathan Hawkins. What's going on, Nathan? <laughs> Nothing much. Just supporting my here, supporting my mom and her campaign and her dish, bid for District 120. Let's talk about how important it is, Nathan. You've been around this lady your whole life. Tell us, Black Video News and our viewers, the impact you think that your mom can could bring to this community, man. She's been putting in work. Let's yeah, talk about it. Definitely. That. I think she could be awesome for this community. If you look at what she's done with the youth center, what she's done in our lives, me and my brother, I mean, that just speaks for itself. She's the type of person who will take in somebody off the street, take them in their house, you know, feed them, fix them up, send them off, take them to school, you know, do whatever they have to do to make them successful. So one thing she always emphasized to me and my brother was that uh, be your brother's keeper. And that's one thing that I feel like she, the overall theme of her life has been, has been her brother's keeper. How do you feel about, your mom just made a point about, you know, filling her shoes. She's got two shoes, you got one, your brother has one. How do you feel about being your mom's intercessor, man, when we talk about being an asset in this community? Uh, I think it's important. I, I always feel that it's important for the kids to step up and take the role that their parents are taking in the community. Uh, me and my brother, again, I have my MBA, and so my background's in business and his is in education. So we, we feel like we're, we, we're confident enough that we'll be able to fill in enough, just enough to get it, get by <laughs> while our mother, mother is in Austin and doing big things in Austin for us. Okay, you want to add one quick note before we wrap up about mom in this election? Uh, just, we need your support uh, just, uh, just for this election and, and for the election in November. And, you know, we're, we're happy to serve and she'll, she will be an excellent candidate for you guys. Barbara, let's go ahead and add this last note. I'm going to give it to you. What do you want to tell our viewers? I'd like to tell our viewers that this is an important election. This seat has been held nearly 20 years, and now there's a change. In a, in a district where there's 75,000 registered voters, only 1,626 have shown up to vote today. So think about it. A very small percentage will decide your faith. So what I'm asking is for all our voters to get out on Tuesday, which is the last day of voting. The polls are open 7 to 7, and please vote for me. I really want to make some impactful changes to improve our quality of life in District 120, and thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Nathan, thank you so much for taking your time out, Barbara. Thank you so much. This has been a special report with Barbara Gerben Hawkins. Election Day is on Tuesday. Keith Scott, Black Video News.